Welcome to today's New Life Live podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by you. Your donations make this podcast possible. Please consider donating today using the New Life app. Visit newlife.com or call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. It is Steve, and Steve is here with Dr. Jill Hubbard. Yes, I'm here. Hi, Steve. And people are on the phone. Yes, and we're going to take your calls, and it's going to be a great day. And I hope you're having a really, really good day. Halfway through October, and, uh, you know, if you, well, I'll tell you, if you don't like fall, live in Africa or something. <laughs> I don't know. What, but fall is such a great oh, time of awesome. year. And uh, I just look forward to it every year and i hope and pray that you and your family enjoy fall and you get to do some things that you love to do and all of that so anyway uh we love getting to be with you and uh, we love it so much that what we're going to do is go right to the phone calls here and talk with charlene from rockwall texas charlene you are on with the one and only dr jill <laughs> hubbard and steve arderburn oh, there are many duplicates of me but uh, only one of hardly. how you doing wonderful well, Thank you. I'm starting to enjoy some fall. We have one more day of 90 degrees. And uh, we meant to stay mm. below that. You're from, you're from Rockwall, Texas. What a great place yeah. to be from. Right I outside. also understand it's nice to live there. It is. It's a nice place. It's grown very fast. And it's the mm -hmm. highest place in the state for ragweed. Oh, oh boy! Okay, a lot of okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. I'm sure the tourist bureau is not happy with you, but that's okay. You've just told all of America, right? <laughs> Redweed and cedar. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, again. how could we help? Yeah. Well, it you might be able to share something extra at the end of what I have to share with you. Um, years ago. Um, when I married my husband and I, we were married 25 years, and I was very much of the, the five personality type thing. I was the affirmation and so forth, and he did more. He needed more of the, um, I guess, respect and that sort of thing. Well, I also discovered that uh, I'm codependent, and. Uh, been that way for a long time. Grew up in a family with an alcoholic, uh, my grandpa. And so I knew that I could never cure somebody. Well, that didn't happen with my husband, but after 25 years of marriage, on our uh, anniversary, we were talking about some uh, things we planned for the next year. And he said, well, I don't know, but I do know one thing is that I love you, but I'm not in love with you, and I don't want to be married to you anymore. Mm. And that started a chain of events mm -hmm. that, um, of course, my uh, thing was to just freeze up, and his was always to go into the man cave. So sure. there wasn't okay. communication for quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> but the main thing that I, happened from that is he went on to someone else. My mm. daughter married somebody that I knew was not right for her. And so I thought, you know, this isn't right. I need some life. So I was out at an event, and I met someone that was younger than me, and I didn't know how much younger, but he showed respect. He gave me affirmation, compliments, took me to uh, breakfast a day or two later. And out of my um, mercy, <laughs> I wanted to help him because he didn't have money. He just recovered from 
a okay, major you're, illness. You're going to have to really get to that question here, but, but now we're going to have to wait till okay. after the break to hear what okay. happens here. You are listening to New Life Live, and are we ever glad you are? We'll be back right after this. My wife had found me out and came home one weekend. She had revealed my secret. The only reason I was sorry at that time is because I had been caught. I had had the Every Man's Battle book for years and pulled that book out that weekend and found the phone number on the back and called it. And then a week later, I was at Every Man's Battle. It really gave me the start I needed for my recovery. I never had had that opportunity to sit down with guys I didn't even know and totally open up. The good thing was, was I was opening up to guys I didn't even know. So why did I care? Just lay it all out on the table. I have nothing to lose. You need to check it out. At least go online, check out what it's about, and take the chance and go do it. If you're struggling, call us. There are people on the other end of the line who want to hear from you, who want to help you. We don't want you to go on struggling. But you got to take that first step. Just give us a call. It's 1 800 639 5433. It's 1 800 New Life. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1 800 New Life. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here. Dr. Jill Hubbard is in the studio, and we're talking with Charlene. Charlene's husband rejected her, and she was being really nice and codependent with a guy that seemed nice to her. And what happened, Charlene, with this other man here? Um, well, I, as a caring person and an abler, began to help him with a gift to music that he had. Mm-hmm. And he was without money, and I was with money at the time. Mm-hmm. And so I how much really did you lose before it was all? When it was all oh. before it was or when it was over? How much money had you lost to this guy? I know at least two hundred thousand was put toward all this stuff, oh. and I finally got rid of him in Nashville. But he's not done anything since then. But the thing I want oh, to share gosh. is that I found out very quickly that he was abusive both verbally and physically he was alcoholic just like his dad had been many years prior and he uh, was the kind that was kind of like passive aggressive he'd be real nice make up mm-hmm. and then be bad and I knew this just was not morally right for me because I'd been a believer for years and yet okay. since my husband responded to somebody else mm-hmm. I did this well, okay, so you have to get to a question now, Charlene. To, uh, tell us what, okay. what's the, the big issue today. Okay, the big issue is after all of that and all the damage physically and emotionally and so forth, I finally got him out of my life, but that's been over 10 years ago, and I still mm-hmm. am angry at myself. I get depressed about it. I see the physical um, so-called treasures or losses, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I feel the the money loss because I live on Social Security, and I'm in an apartment that has some memories to my things that I have, belongings, but no family member wants it, no family member is close by. Okay. So what, so what's the question for us? What's the question for us today, then? How could we help you? Is there anything special besides just praying, recommitting it to God? Um, You've been doing that. You be, you haven't been able to forgive yourself. And that's what I need to find out a, a different path to do it, because okay. I can't seem to do that. Cause I well, I am so thankful. Every day. I'm, so th- hmm. I'm so thankful you didn't go another 10 years feeling horrible about something yeah. that you cannot change. Have you ever heard yes. the serenity prayer? Yes, I have. God, grant me the serenity, me the serenity. to accept mm-hmm. the things I cannot mm-hmm. change. I cannot you know why change. that's the first part of the serenity prayer? Because I think it's perhaps <laughs> our biggest <laughs> challenge in life which should say to you, 
you're not alone. You're not mentally ill. Mm -hmm. You're like a lot yeah. of other people, and it's really hard for you to move on. Right. But Steve, for some reason, I you've called us today <laughs> because well, for some reason you've called us today because you don't want to do this, what you've been doing anymore. And for that, I'm grateful. So I'm just going to ask Jill to help you do something different mm -hmm. than you've been doing. That and might right. make a because huge it's, difference Because it's not about just doing this more of the same thing, Charlene. Steve said that mm -hmm. that doesn't work. And, you know, you were deeply, deeply hurt. I, I can't think of anything yeah. worse than what your husband did, right? And, and yeah. it makes sense that, you know, to have somebody new in your life um, feels exciting and good and, and, you know, feels a bit healing for the pain that you suffered, right? And being yeah. codependent doesn't make you a bad person. It actually means you are someone that has a really big heart, mm -hmm. but there's a hole in that heart that needs filling, right? And so you're trying to yeah. give in order to get. So... You know, it's not that we want to completely eradicate codependency. We just want to put it in the its right place, meaning it's good to be caring about people, but we have to have boundaries and discernment. I think that our Finding Freedom workshop, Charlene, would be fabulous for you to help you get in and kind of readjust those boundaries and to look at your life and to take back being in charge instead of looking for other people somehow to take you out of where you're at emotionally. And, and here's the other thing. I think that what you have is a plague in the Christian community, and it's this. You have 10 years of ungrieved loss. Because if you had had a counselor that was a really dedicated Christian, experienced in counseling, you could have done some grief work 10 right. years ago that, you know, 10 years ago when it happened, you'd start the grief work and maybe mm -hmm. by in a year, year and a half, it would become something that, let's just say it bothered you that it happened but it wasn't causing you to be distressed. You weren't beating yourself up over it anymore. And so that's what I'm going to say to you. If you could get to finding freedom the next time we do it, that would be super. And then in the meantime, let us get a counselor mm -hmm. for you and do the grief work. Now, one of the new products from Life Recovery, we'll be talking about it pretty soon, is taking all of the Life Recovery material and we put it together into a workbook to grieve with. So it's using mm -hmm. the 12 steps to do the grief work. But don't you think that God wants you to be free of this shame and regret? Don't you think that, Charlene? Don't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, and all it, of the stuff that you've done before, it just hasn't produced what you wanted it to well, produce. So let it, us help you find something different. Yes, I think that's the plan, Charlene. Steve, the the grieving over the last 10 years of this relationship, right, that really masked the grief, I think, from the marriage, yes, the 25-year marriage and the loss of as strong a connection with your daughter. So you've yes. got a lot rolled into that, Charlene. So I'm going to challenge everybody Jill, here. What, Go what ahead. was that? Go ahead, Charlene. I just say that I, as a professional, a nurse who's now retired, mm. used to teach people, abuse people, how to get out of this. Yeah. I had two major opportunities to be out, and I didn't take them. Mm. I, I guess I was afraid of even worse. Right. Out, out. Yes. Well, but you it sure. didn't make any difference. You have a whole new no. perspective on helping people in abuse then. And no matter how much any of us know, when it's in our life and when we're too close to a situation, we can't see it accurately. That's why we yeah, all need exactly. help. Oh, my goodness. All of us need right? help. And, um, and I just hope and pray that this is going to be the beginning of something very, very different for you. So hold on. We're going to get you to, to uh, the kind of help that we think really can make a difference. And I'm going to challenge anybody else to ask yourself, is my life being dominated by or controlled by, influenced too much by 
ungrieved loss. Am I still feeling like it happened yesterday when it didn't happen yesterday? That's that's the mm -hmm. big question. God's given us a gift, a grieving process that does free us from that intense pain. I hope and pray, hope and pray that you'll take and take the steps necessary. And, you know, one of the biggest steps is surrender to the God of the universe and let him handle what we don't or can't handle very well. Let's go to Mimi, Buffalo, New York. Mimi, you're on New Life Live. Dr. Jill Hubbard and Steve Arterburn here. How are you today? I'm doing fine, thank you. God bless you. You're well, bless you too. How could we help? Well, I have a question. I I, I have a cousin that um, I loved since I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. And we lost our ways through our lives. And um, we just recently got back together about a year and a half ago. We yeah. actually living together. Um, very active, I must say. Um, he was married to another woman for... He's been separated from her for more than 37 years. Um, we got together, and I know that I've been feeling a little bit... Uh, a little bad because... I'm, I want to be married to him. I, you know, we come from a good family and mm -hmm. very quiet people and kind. Mm -hmm. um, but this has just been bothering me a little bit. And I think I know, I call it maybe, I don't know if it's fornication or something. I'm just a little bit afraid that I may not or he may not make it to heaven. I am a believer. I, I, he, he used to be a Jehovah Witness. Not quite, but he used to go okay. with his mom. So, Mimi? And, so, and Mimi? so now he's coming to Mimi? the Lord. And, Mimi? Yes, sir. Yes. So you're living with your cousin. He's separated, but still married, right? Yes. And you're having sexual relationship with him? Yes, sir. And and you're a believer, and your biggest worry is whether or not he's going to go to heaven over the sexual uh, no, I'm a, stuff? No, I'm afraid for both of us. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. And, so, you know, like, he's come and Mimi, to the Lord recently. Uh-huh. So fear often causes people to change what they're doing. Right. But it doesn't seem, uh, you don't seem to want to change things, it, it, which is, you know, that's understandable. You don't want to change it. So, so I is love all, him. Uh -huh. okay. I don't even have enough income to even go get my own place or anything like that. And so I'm almost to the point, I want to be right with God. Well, and I, I think that is a, well, that's good. a and good now we're desire, talking. Mimi. Because I think yeah. there's several yeah. issues going on here, right? Um, the least of which is maybe your financial needs. Um, right. It sounds like both you and your cousin. And can you tell me, is this your first cousin, Mimi? Or how many well, generations can, removed? Well, you know, he his mother is my sister. It's, 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 it, um, he, she's my aunt. First cousin. Okay. She's okay. actually my mother's sister and we were away from each other for so many years and okay we so you, found each other we always loved each other when we were small but okay we, we heard didn't that know part how to, right right yeah we did because we felt like we wanted to be with each other when we were younger except that my mother moved my sister moved my mom oh, okay and, um, okay so okay we went so jill's trying days. to give you some so help here so Mimi, I mean, first of all, there's the that you're living with a man that you're not married to, you're having sex with him, right? So these are all things that are hindrances to your relationship with God, and then the sad reality that you are family, and that first cousins are correct me guys if I'm wrong are usually not allowed to marry, right? Mm -hmm. So you and I don't I yeah. don't really know I'll have to look that up. But I don't know state the answer. By state. Right, it's state by state. Okay, 
And so this is, you know, okay, you guys have had a love for each other, but it has moved into a romantic realm. Instead of it being the comfort of family and being platonic as it's supposed to be. Now, I understand you haven't been around each other for a lot of years, but there still is that that family bond there. And so I'm wondering about boundaries in your family. And if, if people haven't, you know, had good boundaries when it comes to sexual activity. Um, if I wonder if there's any abuse in your background. Um, no, they have. Okay. No, not. You mean sexual abuse? Right, anything like that, yeah. No, nothing We're, like that, no. Okay. Okay. And, and I'm wondering, too, about your previous dating romantic life and and how that yeah, is pan- was abuse. okay okay so he's someone that probably feels very very safe to you and you both are lonely and it's a comfort right but in terms of getting right with god i don't think it's in the right order and i'm sorry to say that to you it's understandable not right we're going to help you right after this. Most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against. And families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. (laughs) Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back, and it uh, wasn't the Holy Spirit. It was Larry that said, state by state. Yes, it was. <laughs> and so, okay. And we're... so, um, yeah, we're, I guess, some places it's legal, and some places it isn't. But here's, here's the main thing that we want to help you with, Mimi. Whenever we've been isolated, rejected, whatever, and then we get involved with somebody, and it's a sexual uh, connection, it's never easy to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to do the right thing. But I'm going to tell you, if you, want, you called us for advice, I'm going to give you some advice you didn't ask me for. Because I think you were... Kind of wondering if you were going to go to heaven or not. Well, here's the advice you didn't ask me for. I think you should say to him, you have to file for divorce from your wife who has left you or or whatever. You have to be, if you want us to be together, you simply have to be divorced. Now, just because a person is divorced doesn't mean 
that they have grounds to remarry. So he would divorce and or he would get back with his wife if he doesn't have grounds for divorce. But let's say he does. Let's say that she's gone on and married somebody else. Okay. And maybe he's free to remarry. So he does that. And and then, you know, you can figure out somehow for you to live with a roommate or somebody else until you guys can be married. That's how you make something right in the eyes of God mm -hmm. is you, you figure things out. No, you don't have the money to have your own place. But... If he were to have grounds for divorce and to remarry, and he did that, and you made some temporary arrangements, you'd be doing the right thing, and you'd look back on this, and you would, well, you would feel so good that you did the honorable thing. It would be amazing that you did the honorable thing. Jill, what are your thoughts here? Well, I, I think that's definitely where, Mimi, where you need to start. You have to make a big change, and it's going to be difficult because of the comfort you have with him. And mm -hmm. I, you know, Steve, you're mentioning being isolated. You need other people in your world. We're, we are always saying that, that you need women in your world who can walk beside you, who can be a sounding board so that you aren't just locked into a situation and lose your perspective on it. So Yeah, when when you're dating somebody or you're living with somebody you're not married to, mm -hmm. you you're not going to make a good choice if inside your mind it says this, he's all I have. Mm -hmm. He's everything, you know. No one or should I be might all lose you have. Him. Or every when you're, yeah, right? when you're single, you have to have other people, healthy people, mm -hmm. in your life, and then the impossible becomes very, very possible. Right. Someone should add to your life, not be your whole life. Yeah. Mm. So, what right? do you think would happen if you went to him and said, "I've, I tell you, I've been thinking about this. I don't think it's." Right. Uh, and, you know, as, as we said, that some states it's okay for first cousins to marry. I don't think it's right for us to live together. I don't think it's right for us to be sexual and you're still married. Mm -hmm. And I, and even right. if you weren't married, for us to be having sex as single, that's not right. Mm -hmm. Let's make it right. What do you think he would do if you said, I want to make things right? Do you think he would honor that what? or not? I believe he will, but um, he will be very sad. <laughs> he would be sad, but told. he would be sad. But you don't but, die from being sad, right? Well, let's just say this though: exactly. you you found a way, or he found a way to live somewhere else. In other words, to go to sleep in some other bed. That doesn't mean you guys can't be everything else to each other. You know. And so, yeah. yeah, he'd be sad because it's so convenient, but he'd also have a joy in his heart later down the road that he did the right thing when he needed to do it, even though it mm -hmm. was difficult to do. So when you yeah. say to him, honey, I, I'm so glad you'd be sad, but we'd still yeah. be together and we would be honoring God and we'd be honoring each other too. And 37 years yeah. of not making the divorce official what is that about yeah why why exactly hasn't he made it what i told him it's like what he say? I, told him you would, hmm. I said to him you waited too long you should have waited one year or two years at the most and got divorced because he said he didn't divorce because of his daughter and because he didn't want to go with another woman Okay, so whatever, but but now's the time. Okay, but, but so the daughter's got to be long grown. She's grown already and married and all. Right. So now what? So now it just became easy to not deal with it, and it's convenient for you guys to just live together, but it's not producing what Steve is talking about in terms of being right before God. And I really know, and feeling that's good. I've been feeling in time. Yeah. I've yeah, and that's why you, you called need to listen us. to that. And that's why, rather than answer the question of about going to heaven and all of that, I'm giving you some advice on how to make it right so you can be yeah. happy together. 
forever, even though it's going to be difficult, a little bit difficult right yes. now. Okay? Yes. So I just, I hope and pray that you're going to yes, do sir. this thing, which is called being courageous. Being courageous means yes, I sir. do what I need to do when I need to do it, no matter the consequence, no matter the pain. We'll take a break. We'll come right back for more New Life Live. I came into this thinking that my husband was the cause of many of our issues. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop is coming to Columbus, Ohio, October 25th to the 27th. But after learning about our attachment styles, I understood how our past hurts were playing into our present problems. Join Steve Arterburn. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to help people to grow more intimately together. And we believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylan and Kay Yurkovich. We help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. To register to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. Here at this workshop, we had our first ever conversation without yelling, blaming, and accusing. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. Last year after Every Man's Battle, I was so moved by the transformation that I saw, not only in myself, but in the guys in our small group and the other people that were there and the stories that I heard that I decided to go ahead and join Club New Life as a contributor to that. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Because we're doing God's work here, you're restoring marriages, you're giving people hope. It's just been such a blessing to me, and I just wanted to encourage you all. When you see something good that God's doing, just jump on that and help support that. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433. Give your support to them if you can, and, and just help them do what God's doing here in the, in the world. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back, Steve Arterburn. You're really glad you're with us. Larry Sonnenberg, uh, as you heard earlier, is actually in the studio right now. Larry, let's talk about uh, we're halfway through October. We really need some folks to come through for us right now. Everything we do, everything we ask for, is because we want people to get the help that they need. Absolutely. And you know, Steve, there's a spiritual side to this that we don't talk about a lot, but a lady reminded me of that when she wrote, she had heard something Dave said on radio. She said, Dave Stoop recently said that Satan would like very, very much to keep you all off the airwaves and to mm -hmm. destroy new life. Because Satan wants us to live in discouragement and pain and disbelief and mistrust and doubting God. And you're helping people heal. Because once they heal and ever in the midst, they can help others and cross over into enemy territory and release the captives. I definitely believe what Dave said. I will pray for you all the more often that God keeps you safe from Satan's attacks. Mm -hmm. One of the ways he attacks is by uh, finances. You know, yeah. he, it, it's been a struggle, and I know there are people out there. I was just writing a note to a friend saying our our philosophy of fundraising is pretty simple. We'll make our needs known. People with the resources step up, make the gifts, and God does amazing things. Mm -hmm. We're not twisting arms. Uh, we're not making you feel guilty. But I want. I always want, and unapologetically want people to know that we have financial needs, and it, God uses we'll solve those needs through you our listeners and we'll just pray that you'll step forward and do that so um the need then leads to opportunity yes it mm -hmm. does and it's an opportunity for people who don't have the means to develop an organization and reach out and do things to help us who we're so blessed that god did allow us to create the organization and have the people committed 
to reaching others. And so you're just taking advantage of what what God has already established and uh, and using us to do the things in life that, you know, for whatever reason, you don't have all of the resources to do it the way that we do it here. And we just are so grateful mm-hmm. when yeah. you when you help us. And we're, we look for people to make one-time gifts, and we get a lot of gifts that are five, ten, twenty, fifty dollars. We we look for people to make that exceptional gift that might be in the thousands. We look for people that might support us by uh, donating stock, maybe remembering us in their estate, in their insurance plan, in some way. I mean, just there's so many ways that you can support, and we just want people to know that uh, you can do that. There is a need. And we let God and His Holy Spirit do a work mm-hmm. on you, uh, how He will make it, make His nudging. Sometimes it mm-hmm. might be us. Sometimes it might be something you read or see or hear anywhere along the way. Yeah, one time gift. We're going to send you uh, a copy of One Hundred Days of Healing. It's a beautiful little devotional book. And if you join Club New Life, well, we're going to send you uh, four of them: One Hundred Days of Courage, One Hundred Days of Peace, One Hundred Days of Prayer, and One Hundred Days. Of healing, and I love what you say about you know making us part of your estate planning, so mm-hmm. that your death is a gift to the world. And so, it's just a wonderful thing when you die, and and uh, <laughs> people benefit from it. <laughs> finish okay. that sentence. So, yeah, it, yeah, I know anyway. exactly. <laughs> no, I just kidding. But really, really it, it is a great thing that you know that <laughs> others can be blessed because when you and your spouse. Uh, when you when you're not here, mm-hmm. your legacy goes on uh, because of your generosity. It's one eight hundred New Life. Thank you, Larry, for sharing that. Please help us if you possibly can. And let me tell you, if you don't have resources and you need help, because people have come on board and helped us, there's scholarship, there's assistance. Don't let money stand in the way of you calling and and asking about help, because a lot of people have generously made room for you to get the help that you need. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. All right, let's go to Teresa, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, WFIL is that amazing station that she listens to. Glad that she does. How are you doing? What's going on today? How are you? Good afternoon. Um, Hi. Well, okay, I'll keep it it real brief. My daughter is entering into a same-sex marriage. I will not be in attendance. I have stated to her previously that I will not be there because of what I believe. Um, It has put a strain on our relationship. Um, She kind of keeps her distance from me. And um, I did state to her previously that she is my daughter today, and she will be even after she says I do. And then moving forward um, with our relationship, it's kind of up to her. My question is, What's well, kind of three short questions? Am I doing the right thing and taking a stance? Am I correct in drawing the line? And how do I move forward? Because I am having a very difficult time. I am having anxiety. I'm having all sorts of mm. thoughts. I've even thought about having a sign outside of the wedding. And I <laughs> that sounds mm. crazy, I know. But yeah, I'm just having it does sound a, little crazy. a very just, difficult just time because um, my daughter um, yeah. knows the word. She knows what the word says. And um, it's like... She doesn't even want to hear me say anything about it. You yeah. know, she has to okay. and hugs mm-hmm. and right. so, my we yeah. have to think the word. So, she so, said she just wants me to be her mother and stop bringing up the word. But I can't Okay. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Um, she knows the truth, you mm-hmm. said, right? She doesn't she does. care about the truth. And so um, probably just as one part of this, Continuing to bring up the truth isn't going to help her. In fact, when she says, I, I'd like to talk with you, but I don't want you to be quoting scripture and things, and then you do that, you're kind of saying, um, you know, I, I'm not interested in a relationship with you. And I want to have a relationship with people that don't believe the same way I do. I want to have relationship with atheist and and things like that and so if one of those people an atheist or somebody of a different faith was one of my kids i'd sure want to have a relationship with them 
even though I couldn't endorse or support some kind of choice like marrying somebody of the same sex. So part of my answer right. to you in your situation is I, would, I think it would be good for you to be sensitive to her. She knows how you feel. You don't need to convince her. And, and here is the angle I would be taking with her. You want me to support you and accept you in all of the ways that you think, feel, and believe. Now, isn't that true? Isn't that what she's asking of you? Well, yeah, basically. I mean, okay, mm -hmm. okay. So she's asking that of you. That, that so why shouldn't why shouldn't why shouldn't you be asking that of her, honey? You know how I raised you. You know how I feel about things like this. Why would you expect me to abandon my beliefs about right and wrong and, and uh, same sex and sex outside of marriage? And anyway, why would you expect me to abandon that and yet you expect me to accept you in what you believe and what you accept? Do you see see how it doesn't yeah, make sense that she's asking you? Yes. Mm -hmm. You have a, a right, just as she does, to believe like you believe and stay true to your values. Jill, you have some thoughts on this? Well, yeah, I, I think you, you have a really good point, Steve. That is something that is important to point out to her. And I, I think that I would be really vulnerable and, and say... You know how I believe, and this is so, so hard for me. And basically admit that I don't know how to approach this with you. There you go. Because yeah. I don't want to alienate you. I want us to be close, and I don't know how to reconcile with this. And you have to know that I am struggling so much. And each decision I make about this, you know, it's it's all new territory for me, and that I'm really weighing it out with the Lord, because I understand there's grace, and there's a balance between grace and truth. And I'm navigating that. And so I ask for your patience in this. But at the same time, I'm asking for there to be room for, like what Steve said, for how I see things and for you to accept me in where I'm at. Yes, All right. we've and, had that and, talk. We've, we've okay. had that talk. Okay. And this is her response to me and whether I come or not. The last text that I received on it was, if you don't want to come, just say so. I'm fine with it. Mm. Okay. You know what I would say back to her? It is. It would just be too painful for me to come. That's that's different than I would be so angry at you. I mm -hmm. can't come, or I have I'm to make so a statement. I'm so disappointed in or... you. Just it it would be too painful for me to be there, and and I think that's so honest mm -hmm. and true, and I think it's easier for her to accept that. We'll take a break. Come right back after this. I feel blessed to have had this opportunity for my needs to be met, connecting with other women who are fighting the same fight, hoping for healthy marriages, and growing closer to the Lord on their journey. My name is Shelly Martinkus, and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography, it might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. I feel encouraged and hopeful that even in my struggle, I am enough. You will leave with hope, with a community of sisters ready to support you, and you will also leave with tools to move you forward on this journey. Through the sharing in our small group, I realize that I am not alone. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Washington, D.C., November 15th to the 17th. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. 
Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. And, uh, you know, I really hope and pray something we've said here, Teresa, has helped you with this very difficult situation. But I, I, I really hope that uh, you'll work with somebody and, and so that your feelings are of love and concern versus anger. And I can only imagine how... Uh, very painful this is for you and it, mm -hmm. it really is a, a tough situation to be in but i am glad that she says mom just you know tell me come don't mm -hmm. come i can live with that and uh, you know so many folks are struggling with kids gender identity or mm -hmm. they have chosen uh, same-sex relationships it's really sad uh, the world that we live in because uh, in another era uh, you might have had some kind of same-sex attraction. Uh, it was a little phase or whatever developmentally, and you get through it, and, and it's, it's over. Uh, in this day and age, somebody has some kind of strange or different desire, and then people come around, oh, well, then you've got to go with that or whatever. Well, yeah. I've and said I, it Oh, go yeah, ahead, go Steve. Ahead. No, go well, ahead. And I, I think... Being interrupted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. You know, and I think so much with children and how people are wanting to intervene sooner and sooner with kids instead of yeah. allowing for the natural natural developmental phases that children go through and i've said this over and over again where our first love relationships are our best friends and those are same sex relationships i mean first our mm -hmm. parents right mm -hmm. and then um our our best friends and as we navigate that then we move into the opposite sex attraction. So when you intervene early at some of those phases where people, where kids, even in the imagine, you know, the imaginative phase, right? Because I, you hear about yeah. like three-year-olds saying things and then parents going with that and making changes for kids. And I, it's just abusive. Well, right? when I was uh, on Focus on the Family last, I, I told folks that when I was, you know, we had lunch Afterwards, Jim Daly and I had lunch, and he was talking about this secular research that yeah. has just proven uh, what the Bible says is true, and that is that anybody with gender uh, confusion, mm -hmm. if they're left alone, by the age of 18, it's self-correct. Right. Well, nobody leaves these kids alone anymore, and it's really sad. And so I just hope and pray uh, that if you're in one of these situations— uh, where you have a child and they're struggling and they're confused and they don't know what to do. You know, the the common knowledge of the world, it, it does, no matter how much uh, they try, the Bible is right about this. It's correct about this. And, you know, we love people, whatever they feel toward anybody in any way. We love you. Whatever you're doing, we care about you. But I'm telling you, there is a right way. Uh, the Bible says there is a path that seems so right to people, but it always ends in death and destruction. And so when we get on God's path, it's not easy. But I'm telling you, it is the path that's the right path that leads to connection and to uh, a person feeling close to God and able to be close to 
to other people in authentic relationships. That's what we want. And when you're struggling like that, let us help you. Just call us. We want to help you in whatever you're struggling in. Uh, this morning, I did an interview on Moody uh, Radio, talking about the things that are not talked about enough in church. And too often, we don't go to church and share the struggle because of our shame. We're embarrassed mm -hmm. of what we're going through. But I'll tell you this, somebody else is going through exactly what you're going through. And when you step up and you're open about it, gives them permission to be open about it, too. And if you need help, I'm just I'm just hoping and praying that you'll call us and let us help you. And we can do that in several different ways. And the first one is simply by uh, letting you or sending you or pointing you to a video or an audio, a podcast or, or something like that. The second thing that we can do for you is that we can find a book for you, a resource that, that changes the way you start to think about things. And then beyond that, we have counselors everywhere that that really do love the Lord and they love watching people change and they know it's not easy. They're on your side. And, you know, we, we have a lot of about 1,300 of these people that we've worked with and we love sending them someone and we know that they can get the help that they need. And then the intensive. That's what New Life does so well we've worked on it for years when i say us I, see i'm not talking about me i'm not in those small groups i'm not doing the kind of hard work that our clinicians do mm -hmm. uh, but that's what really makes the difference in our intensives and you come to a weekend with us and because of the christian counselors we fly in from all over the country things change that will never change just by listening to someone talk and then you leave and do the best that you can. If you've never been to one of our intensives, you've got something very, very helpful, uh, something very, very different uh, ahead of you if you'll just be willing to come. And to do that, you call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. Now, a lot of times, people call us and they don't have the money to get the help that they need. Well, uh, we've got... Uh, an amazing thing coming up, our marriage intensive in Columbus, Ohio. At that one, we have a special way you can come at no cost. Uh, or And then if you have means, but you don't have a lot of, then we've got some scholarship assistance. But some people are going to be in a special group, and they're going to be there at absolutely no charge. So you should call us if you could drive to Columbus, Ohio. That would be just amazing. And that's on the 25th. But you know what? The f other folks in other workshops, they don't have resources. And you listening right now could be $100 of a $500 scholarship or $10 of a $500 scholarship or something like that. And maybe that's why on this day, God had you tune in to our program because God needed you to support us. He mm -hmm. wanted you to support well, us. And you'll and benefit. And Steve, there's a lot of people that pay it forward, too, that were given scholarships that then treat other people down the road because of the work that they were able to do. So it may yeah. not be your right now time, but you can always pay it forward. That's right. And, you know, um, I think folks uh, really do believe, Larry, in you and what you do for New Life. I think people really do know that you are just the best steward of mm -hmm. all uh, of what's been given to us, the support that we receive. And I hope people will come alongside and, and give and give generously. And you do that by calling 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Larry, t tell folks uh, what we could do for them by way of saying thank you. Well, I think the best thing we can do for them is share with them some of the testimonies and the things and help them understand that they're a part of every story that they hear on radio or mm -hmm. hear from us when we talk to them on the phones or anything. Because lives that change and are different forever, it's a really moving experience. Yeah. And some people, you know, it might be a week later we hear it and we're kind of hanging on hoping this will last. And then five years later we hear it in 10 mm -hmm. years. And they just so say, cool. generationally, you made a difference. And not just the ripples aren't just going out sideways. They're going up and down. And, uh, you know, we, we like to give gifts back to you when you make a gift for certain, you know, for 
like the uh, book that we're offering now, the 100, 100 Days, Days of, of Healing, Healing, and Club New Life, and, and all those things. But um, we just want you to know that what we do makes a difference. And you're a part of everyone when you're a part of the Giving mm -hmm. Family for New Life. And we can't well, thank you enough. Whether you can help us or you need some help, same number, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Jill. Thanks to all who listen, watch, and pray. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's one 800